The fastest growing minority group in the Austin area has seen an uptick in hate crimes and incidents over the last year. According to a national report, other parts of the country, that surge is as high as 150%. Many see the pandemic as a cause. But as we see in the first of our special reports, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders faced racism long before that. In honor of AAPI Heritage Month, here's KV's Jenny Lee with part one of our series, Racial Equality, Building a Better Austin. We cannot, we cannot be, be silenced, silenced anymore. anymore. As Asian American and Pacific Islanders rally to in hate. We belong here. We are not a virus. In Austin. <laughs> This is beautiful. And across the country. And she actually lost her U.S. citizenship because she married an Asian man. Aisha Khan says AAPIs have been fighting racism since they immigrated to the U.S. Khan is the Asian American community archivist at the Austin History Center. She points to Frances Moreno Singh, a Mexican American woman who, after marrying Joe Singh, a Chinese man, lost her U.S. citizenship. The Expatriation Act mandated that any American woman who married a foreigner take her husband's nationality. This is a picture of Frances with her four children in 1910. One of those children, Margaret, eventually grew up and became the first in her family to buy a home. Today, on Willow Street in East Austin, there is a state historical marker designated that home as the first Asian American house in Austin. Many AAPIs, especially the Chinese, started arriving in the U.S. in the 1850s, escaping economic crisis and famine in China. Many heard about the California gold rush and got jobs in mining. When the gold rush was over, they found work in farming, the factories, and the garment industry. Then in the 1860s, Central Pacific started hiring Chinese workers to build a transcontinental railroad, but only after not finding enough white workers to do so. Chinese laborers were paid less and had to find their own accommodations, while the railroad company provided food and shelter for the white workers. As the number of Chinese immigrants grew, so did the anti-Chinese sentiment. And in 1882, the federal government took action and passed the Chinese Exclusion Act, prohibiting immigration of Chinese workers. It's the first law in the nation's history that barred immigration solely based on race. Eric Tang is the director of Asian American Studies at the University of Texas. The purpose of the Chinese Exclusion Law was to ensure that the citizenry of the West Coast, and by extension, the rest of the country, was primarily, if not exclusively, white. But Austinite Mitchell Wong's family arrived in the country another way. He was initially in Mexico. His grandfather, Dung Wong, migrated from China to Mexico. There, he became one of 527 men who cooked and cleaned for General John Pershing's army, known as the Pershing Chinese. And in 1917, uh, Army General John J. Pershing um, leads an expedition into northern Mexico in hopes to ca capture Mexican revolutionary uh, Francisco Pancho Villa. But after 11 months, General Pershing was unsuccessful and ordered home. Pershing, however, did get the group of immigrants asylum in the U.S., despite the Chinese Exclusion Act. That's how Mitchell Wong's grandfather settled in San Antonio. In 1938, Mitchell's parents, Fred and Rose Wong, moved to Austin and opened one of several grocery stores, New China Market on Red River Street. Mitchell was born the following year. Growing up, Wong says he didn't see other AAPIs. And while he did experience discrimination... The kids would uh, call me names because I looked a little different. And uh, I'd go uh, tell my mama. Wong says he remembers Austin as tolerant. Austin's... Uh, motto in those days was Austin was the friendly city. There was nothing friendly about how the U.S. government treated Isamu Taniguchi, whose family ended up in Austin. In 1941, Japan's surprise attack on Pearl Harbor thrust the country into World War II. Around 120,000 Japanese, many born on U.S. soil, were forced into internment camps, including Austinite Evan Taniguchi's family. First, they took his grandfather, Usamu, and imprisoned him in California. They gave grandpa like three hours to get all his stuff together. After three and a half years, they were released and moved to the Rio Grande Valley. There, Evan's father, Alan, gained attention for his work as an architect, which led the family to UT here in Austin. Growing up... Hey, guys jumped up and beat me up. Evan says the racism he faced went beyond words. 
So the uptake of hate incidents he's seeing now. It just makes me feel sick because you know how much we've struggled. A national report by Stop AAPI Hate shows nearly 4,000 hate incidents across the U.S. from March of 2020 to February of 2021. Texas has the fourth highest number of hate incidents with 103. Manju Kakari says she saw the need to help form Stop AAPI Hate last March and started tracking these occurrences. And within a few weeks, we got um, several hundred incident reports from across the country. In Austin, hate incidents against AAPIs are also up. Rocio Villalobos is with the city's equity office. Instances of verbal harassment. Um, we know that there was a, at least one temple that was vandalized. Um, we know that business owners have received death threats. The city is working with AAPI community members to try to tackle and track these hate incidents. Plus, there's a local and national movement by AAPI members to try to stop this hate altogether. That's coming up on Wednesday. Tomorrow, contributions like this Japanese garden made by AAPI members throughout the years. In Austin, I'm Jenny Dorman.